Hi. So, one of my favorite things about uh, desktop CNCing is that there's so many ways to skin most cats. So today I want to talk about a couple of the ways that I send G-Code to the Shapoko, including my very, very favorite one. Like most folks that were just starting out, I, you know, I just used the laptop hook straight up to the machine for everything. And it was cool, except, um, you know, a couple of small things. First, uh, you know, it just, it's crying out for a touch screen. Like these big bright buttons, just want to grab them. The second problem was, you know, this is an older MacBook Pro and, you know, it, it's got fans. Um, so I don't think that's really long for this world. Like I really kind of would prefer something, you know, fanless and sealed instead of, you know, this, which is gonna clog up and catch on fire or die. Um, and then the last thing was, you know, it's, you know, on a stand and like, it, it's just bulky. And uh, you know, in a basement shop, every, you know, foot counts. And, uh, you know, I, I just wanted something uh, that wasn't going to be in the row. The next thing I wanted to try was uh, CNCJS on a Raspberry Pi. What's awesome is these things are like $30. And you don't need a keyboard or a monitor. You know, you basically can configure it on your computer. And then you just, like, plug it in, plug in the Shapoko, set it down, let it run. And uh, you can just access the Pi and the software through web, any web browser. I use Chrome. Um, you just drag your G code, like to preview it, you can run it. You do all your setup here. You know, you got this little kind of keyboard thing so you can do all your jogging. And stuff. it's super cool and totally free. Um, I like it. The downside is, you know, you're using, you know, open source software and not carbide motion. It's a little trickier to set up, though not that tricky if you're, you know, somewhat familiar with computers. Um, it's not that bad. Anyhow, as cool as CNCJS is, I wanted to get back on Carbide Motion because of all the exciting new stuff Carbide 3D's come out with lately, like the HDC, the bit setter. Yeah, you can actually use all that stuff with CNCJS, but, uh, and, and people on the forums have already figured out all the stuff to figure out but you know I, I just wanted to be able to plug it and play it and kind of keep up with them as they're pumping out this new stuff so i wanted a good machine just to run carbide motion on um my requirements were uh, it needed to be like modern it needed to be fanless it needed to be small and you know i didn't ideally without dongles or anything weird um there's a ton of cheap tablets on Amazon and uh, most of them are garbage. Like I bought and returned a couple before I landed on the perfect one. This bad boy right here, the, uh, the Fusion 5 10 inch tablet PC. So, what's cool? It runs the full version of Windows 10. And most importantly, it runs like the latest, most up-to-date, current, as of like this morning, Windows 10. Um, the last one I got, um, you know, it, it gave you a big, you know, Windows out of date update. And then it either wouldn't update, but if you manually updated it, it would get stuck in like a weird BIOS loop and you have to keep resetting the firmware and it, it was garbage. This machine, Updates fine. It's got, um, and I think that's because it's got the 64 gigs internal storage. A lot of these, you know, hundred dollar tablets, you know, they've got 32 gigs. Of, they don't have enough room to download Windows updates because uh, the latest updates it's basically a whole new copy of Windows 10. Um, speaking of Windows 10, it is Windows 10 S, um, and as soon as you get it, you can go to the Windows Store and turn it into Windows Home. So to go along with the tablet, I found this arm at Micro Center. It was 10 bucks. I think it was originally designed to bolt like, you know, tablets to the like floors of like a cop car or something. It's perfect with carbon motion. Like the screen is just the right size. Like the touch screen, I mean, it's, it, it really feels like it's designed for something like this. Like it's small enough to just stay permanently attached to the machine. So it's basically a dedicated controller. Um, but again, it's got just enough power to, you know, it runs the software well. 
It uh, plays nicely on the network. You know, if you need to use like Dropbox or Google Drive to get files, like it's got enough horsepower to like do that. Um, and the big thing is like, unlike a lot of the cheap tablets, it's got enough storage space. You can stay current and update to the latest, you know, and greatest Windows 10, which, you know, you don't want to be running an old version of Windows for security's sake. Um, this thing at 199, like, it's not the cheapest, but it's still, I think, reasonable enough to just, it's automatic. Like, I, you know, if I had another Shapoko, I'd buy another one of these. Like, it's just a really good setup so far. I'll put a link down below for like this stuff. Uh, they won't be affiliate links because I have like 50 subscribers and no sponsors. But uh, like I said, I know uh, if it's helpful, hopefully it's helpful because this stuff, I like it.